He is preparing for God who is still coming, a God who is coming and uh, who is heralded in a creation that is still ongoing. That's quite correct. I would say, to put it simply, that the tradition views God as a point of reference in the past. And with they are, uh, God is no uh, reference uh, in the past, is not to be identified with any point in the past, as if uh, as if we keep diverging from him. Uh, with they are, the basic notion, I think, which is quite interesting, is that uh, God does not provide for any kind of grounds out of which man can then go his own way and diverge from him. God is the end point, the omega point, as he called it, that towards, uh, towards which everything ultimately is bound to converge. He understands man as a God-bound creature, if I can put it that way. Those may not be quite his words, but they do justice, I think, to his uh, view of the human phenomenon. Man as uh, a creature coming into his own, and the more he comes into his own, the more he becomes conscious of God as other than man. Pierre Théard de Chardin is an extraordinary person. We are told of a story of his childhood. His mother was cutting his hair one day, and as she clipped the curls from his head, she tossed them rather casually into the fireplace, and there they were immediately consumed in the fire. Young Teilhard cried. His hair was destroyed. His mother tried to console the boy, so she cuddled him in her arms, looking into the fireplace, and she thought for a moment, and then she told him, Pierre, the hair is not destroyed, it's only changed. We cannot help but recognize that in that story is perhaps the seed of the insight which grew through the life of Pierre Teilhard into his system, not only of science, but of theology, an integrated view of reality as continual change, as continual manifestation of God as creator. Let's take a look at some of his basic insights as represented in this photomation sequence based on the phenomenon of man and the appearance of man. It takes us through creation, through the eyes of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. of space, a seeming nothingness, yet there is something, light, matter, energy, being. It exists and has stuff, shape, form, externals, and yet it is more than what it appears to be. It has depth. Reality has a within, an inner cohesiveness, which even when we lose ourselves in its midst, its inner reality, its nucleus, its meaning, its heart emerges. In the multiplication of recreation, even at the atomic level, there is always a synthesis which is greater than the mere sum of its parts. Something new and even unforeseen happens. What was a mass of atoms is now a new reality, the molecule. Molecules may simply mass one after another. And yet, at a higher level of synthesis, there is a new reality, a new interiority that makes of them the mega molecule. No longer 
a procession of molecules in isolation, but a new relationship from within. The mega molecules present a new creation horizon, one which can be crossed beyond the simple juxtaposition of one crystal after another, lovely but dead, regardless whether they are diamonds, coal, or salt, each lovely in its limit, but not yet the ever higher expression of a deeper inner communion as the next stage to which the mega molecule can leap is itself an expression. Consider the living cell. It is more than just many mega molecules. It is alive. It is alive with a new interiority and it is capable of an entirely new level of being. Even to the cell, there is the capacity for an ever deeper interiority or within, a complexity that emerges in new and beautiful expressions of reality. The cell is at the heart of all life as we experience it, and yet the cell in its complexification can yield again a totally new reality of an even higher order. We can only wonder at the universe that has come together from the smallest subatomic particles to emerge through transformation and realization of an internal capacity for being into the crowning jewels of the garden that in our solar system is the only paradise. The flower in its billions of expressions that is the earth's garment and nature's celebration. The cell is capable of even more than simply life. There is a transformation of cells so extraordinary that in their new communion, there dawns the reality that is thought itself. The very stuff of the star has come to self-consciousness. There is at last, in this self-consciousness, in this deep interiority, the living person, the human being, 